We meet again here for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 131 for 2 Chronicles chapters 12 through 16. So we have a full load of chapters, but we're going to go over them pretty briefly because we've already discussed a lot of this content. Now, um, in 2 Chronicles 12, King Rehoboam was left king after the death of Solomon. Rehoboam sins by abandoning the law of the Lord, and God sends Egypt as punishment. King Rehoboam repents, and God keeps the cities of Judah from being destroyed. This account differs slightly from the point made in 1 Kings chapter 14, which is its partner verses. Uh, it includes the comments about Egypt hauling away the gold from Jerusalem, saying that they took everything. And 1 Kings goes into more detail about their sins, while 2 Chronicles focuses more on the repentance leading to some de deliverance from the enemies. These versions don't really conflict, but they do tell things differently. So after Rehoboam dies, Abijah takes over as king. King Abijah of Judah has little recorded in 1 Kings 15, yet in 2 Chronicles 13, we have a longer narrative of Abijah, including a battle with Jeroboam of Israel. So in 2 Chronicles 13, verse 4, Listen to me, Jeroboam and all Israel. Do you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingship over to Israel forever to David and his sons by a covenant of salt? Uh, there's statements that he rebelled against his Lord. There was arrogance to withstand the kingdom of the Lord, to rely upon the golden calves, driven out the priest of the Lord. For us, the Lord is our God, not for you, Israel. Anyone can be a priest for you. And then we have not abandoned God like you have. So these are all critiques lobbied against Israel, the northern kingdom, by King Abijah and the southern kingdom of Judah. So Jeroboam sends an ambush to surround and kill the Judeans. The Judeans call upon God and are delivered, and God defeated Jeroboam of Israel. Thus the Israelites were subdued at that time, and the people of Judah prevailed because they relied on the Lord, the God of their ancestors. So there's that subtle dig and subtle point uh, being pro-Judean again, that the Judeans are the ones who are following God, not the Israelites at this exact moment. That's, of course, the Second Chronicles version of it. Uh, moving on to chapter 14, we see that King Abijah dies and his son Asa takes over as king in Judah. This brings ten years of peace. The land has rest from war. He did what was good and right in the sight of the Lord. He took away foreign altars and high places and broke down the pillars. The hewn, he hewn down the sacred poles and obeyed the commandments and built and prospered. So when the Ethiopians come with a million men to fight against the Judeans, they call upon the Lord and are delivered. In 2 Chronicles 15, I don't have too much to note except that the Spirit of God comes upon the prophet Azariah, and together King Asa and Azariah lead the people into a covenant with God. And the Lord gave them rest all around, and King Asa also deals with his mother's idolatry, though not fully. Moving on to 2 Chronicles 16, in his 36th year, King Basha of Israel creates a blockade on trade with Judah. King Asa reaches out to the king of Aram, and this is similar to 1 Kings 15, yet the emphasis once again is different. Here King Asa is rebuked for the alliance, saying, You do not rely on the Lord your God. You have done foolishly, and from now on, uh, you will have wars. So King Asa then turns angry and inflicts harm on his people. And in a similar turn of harm, God inflicts Asa with a severe disease in his foot. The writer then rebukes Asa for consulting physicians instead of the Lord. 
and Asa, the king of Judah, dies a few years later. So uh, all of this is uh, co interconnected with the narrative that we have there um, in the earlier times in the Samuel and the king's narratives. But um, we will look more at the Second Chronicles narrative again next time.